the name came from school um, everyone obviously everyone gets names here and there but when I was in college a few people called me that just wild boy it not like it was never like sometimes I didn't even answer it you know what I'm saying not it wasn't anything like yo that's my name or whatever so when I was starting to make music I was starting to think of a name and I thought ace it's too generic and then ace beats ace there's a ton of ace beats out there I needed something that can stand out and I just thought you know what there's this name note like it's just there and I'm just put wild boy in front of it so I put wild boy ace together and then yeah that's just how I put the name together still Yeah man, it's Wild Boy Ace, um, music producer, manager and a lot of other things as well. Yeah, yeah in regards to um, in regards to management, um, it's something um, I sort of went into. Um, it wasn't like a planned thing that I wanted to do. But I guess when you're in the creative industry, you just learn to go into different avenues. It takes you into different avenues that you don't even know about. In between going into different avenues and whatnot, I went into the management side of things as well. Um, with my friend as well, Joey. Um, we've got a management company called like Withdrawn. And um, we look after like different artists from like different backgrounds and stuff. Um, yeah, that's how I go into that still. How did I get into producing? Um, I started when I was started when I was 18 basically when I left school um, the same day I got my GCSEs uh, I moved up to Birmingham and then after like <laughs> after like eight months out there um, I didn't like it innit? and obviously with different situations out there I had to move back and when I moved back I didn't move back to where I was staying before so obviously I was away from like my friends and a lot of other people as well so I was literally just by my one isn't it it's around summertime as well so there was literally nothing for me to do didn't have a job nothing at all in it so in the midst of just having nothing to do um, I came across like music um, I had a friend Dan Blizz and he produces yeah so I think he posted a, a beat on YouTube and I just hit him up like how do you do it? You know, them ones, everyone listens to music, everyone, but it's like, I don't think a lot of people have actually taken time out to actually think of how it's done. Like, how did the bass line come? What is, how did you put it together? So I just hit him up like, yo, how do you do it? And he's like, I'll just get the software called um, FL Studio, which I still use, use till today. I got it within like 30 minutes. And then from there, I just used to do it all the time, innit? Um, yeah, I just used to do it all the time, like just, Took to like obviously as I said I had nothing to do with my time in it so it's just something I was just spending a lot of time on just to waste time basically you know not like do it properly so that's how I just I I go into producing still. Before what I wanted to do before um obviously the football everyone wanted to kick ball and obviously where I'm originally from which is Highbury you got Emory Stadium right there. So it's like when you see that on your way to school and all, and where we used to kick balls all opposite the stadium as well. It's like, yeah, everyone wanted to kick ball. Obviously I was like, I'm not the greatest in it, but I got better in that. But I wanted to be like a car racing driver as well. That's what I was into, innit? I was into cars. I used to watch a lot of Top Gears and, and stuff. Um, used to buy a lot of like car racing games. That's what I wanted to do, innit? But it changes all the time, it changes, innit? You know what I'm saying? I used to play basketball at school as well, but obviously my height stopped in it, so it's like you can't, <laughs> you can't really do nothing with that, you know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, but yeah, there was just there was there was a few things, but yeah, not music was never like one of them. Um, the first the first song I ever heard anyone do onto one of my beats was he was an American guy. You know them people you just connect with on the internet through it was just Twitter in it. Um, and he used to rap, you know them people that always post like I need beats and I was just searching beats on you know the search thing and I just found this American guy and I said got I like, just checked out his music. It was it was it was good. It was one of my early like probably as I said he was the first person that, that ever got into my beats in it. Um, so I sent him some beats and then he vocaled one of them and yeah he was the first, literally the first and then from there there was a girl that I knew back then. Um, she was into music, so she took me to like my first ever like 
you know, them pop up shows and whatnot. And I met um, an artist called uh, D Rhymes, and I just spoke to him. And I think he was the second ever person to vocal my beats as well. And then from there, I just started to, yeah, little placements here and there. So, yeah. so uh, first placement that I was like raw, like yo, okay, this is something. Um, more slightly scraps, yeah, more slightly scraps. That was the first point that it's like yo, <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying? That like, man's actually uh, what am I producing now? You know what I'm saying? said earlier when I moved when I moved back from Birmingham I moved away from like where I was from so I moved to somewhere closer to Northwest um, and I ended up going to a Northwest College so when I was out there um, I was had to meet, meet new people and that um, they used to show me like the people I was close with in that college they used to show me like artists from Northwest like nines scraps and other artists and I was like I'm from North innit, I just don't care about, you know what I'm saying, all I listen to is Joe Black squeaks and you know what I'm saying, I was like alright cool whatever man. So I think, um, I think a week after, Scraps, yeah he dropped a warm up session and being a producer, what you tend to do a lot is you, you see what's out there. So I see his name and I'm like oh wait this is the person, these are talking about, let me just check it out, just for the sake of checking it out. And I was like, yo, he's, he's hard. I think he came out of jail that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, what? this is hard. <laughs> so I hit him up and then I, was, I just DM him like, yo, what's good, bro? Let's, I like I like, I like your stuff, let's let's get some stuff done. Um, yeah, and then what then happened was he got back to me and then he's like, so yeah, send some beats through or whatever, whatever. I sent him, I sent him two beats. And even the two beats I sent him were beats where I made for someone else and they did not like it. So there were beats that were just chilling on my hard drive. Um, one of them was Mission Impossible and the other one was Goodnight. And even the Mission Impossible beat as well, I named it the actual song Mission Impossible. Like the beat was called Mission Impossible because at the time I was using like a computer where it was like one gig RAM in it. And if you know about RAMs, you know that's terrible. You can't really do much with that. You can't load up nothing. So I was making beats with literally no resource. And then I wanted to put more into the beat, but I couldn't because it kept crashing in it. So I named the beat Mission Impossible. Like the mission was impossible, wouldn't it? So I sent that to him and another beat called Goodnight. Um, and then he was like, yeah, um, I'm back in like a week or whatever, whatever. I'll vocal them and then send them back to you. And that's exactly what he done. And yeah, and then when he was shooting the video for it, he invited me down there as well. Um, and that was funny enough, that was like the first big song I ever had. My first song on radio, first song on TV. So yeah, at that point it was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? This is, <laughs> and then obviously my friends that introduced me to him at school were like, told you, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, I know man, I know, I know, I know. But yeah, at that point it was when things started to like, I started to do it a bit prop, like properly in it. It wasn't a thing where like, I'm just doing this after college, you know what I'm saying? I would do it properly. And, yeah, that's, that's, that's how it happened still, that's where it started, basically. I, when, when I sent it, I, I would not lie to you, you probably hate me for saying this now, it was like a thrower beat, you know, because I never listened. <laughs> I never listened to like Scraps or Nines or any of these guys at the time, innit? So I didn't actually know their style, you know what I'm saying? And I thought, you know what, I've got these beats just chilling, I'm not doing anything with it. So that's literally what I sent, you know what I'm saying? I had no idea if he, if he would even like it because I didn't like the beat. Clearly, if I named it Mission Impossible, it's just the beat wasn't even like finished, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't finish it as much as I wanted to. So for it to do what it done, it was like, it taught me a lot, you know what I'm saying? It taught me a lot in the sense of like less is like less is more in it, you know what I'm saying? It taught me to utilize more of what I got, you know what I'm saying? It's not all about what you have in it. And it's just them little lessons that that's helped me through over the years as well. So it's like over time, the struggle of having one gig RAM, like because I couldn't put as much sounds and stuff, it taught me to utilize and find the right ones. So if, like a lot of the productions I have right now, you might have you might hear maybe just two instruments and then I, I just the drums. You know what I'm saying? You know why boy Ace made it? I mean, when I started producing, there was a lot of struggles like in different ways even to the music side of things and personal side of things there was a lot of struggles as i said i didn't even have a laptop i was using my uncle's computer in his dining room that's got one gig gram you know what i'm saying that alone was tough 
because I can't download instruments, I can't use certain things. And even then I had no money in it. So I was using like 10 pound earphones from Argos. So literally I was making music all night, my ears were hurting. That's de that was definitely a struggle, I can't even lie to you. On the personal side of things, well, musically anyways, I didn't have any musical background. A lot of producers, they were either like drummers in church or play keys, or their dad was a DJ or their mom was a singer. With me, I didn't know nothing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know what a bass was. Obviously everyone knows what a bass was, but, but if I was to find it, I don't know what to find. I don't know bass, I don't know kick, I don't know snare, don't know nothing. So it's like I had to pick up all the pieces like myself in it. Like for instance, if, if, if someone someone from church and you had to play keys, when he's making beats, he knows how to put certain things together. You know, he knows how to structure something. I didn't even have to structure a beat. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what intro was, even though we all know it, but when you actually have to put it together, you don't I actually didn't know nothing in it. So in that aspect it was very hard and then also trying to learn but you can't learn because you're using a one gig ram computer it was fucked up in it you know what i'm saying so it was tough still and then obviously on the personal side of things um i had to like because i had to move back from birmingham i had to start college twice again you know what i'm saying so it was just a lot going on within that whole period so yeah it was tough still but obviously it was it was like me Coming back from college and making music just took my mind away from like everything else going on. Like, and I'm even to now, obviously, you're still learning, but I think that was probably one of the hardest struggles, still. Like, hardest, hardest, definitely. You know why boy Ace made it? I was listening to a lot of trap songs like Waka Flocka, Gucci Mane, um, that basically them two a lot. Because of that, what I was doing was I was finding out who was producing for them. And then I was finding out it was Lex Luger, Lex Luger Southside, and sometimes Michael Will, and TMAA in it, 808 Mafia, that whole camp. So, subconsciously, they were influencing me without me knowing, you know what I'm saying? So, I used to just make a lot of beats like, their type beats, that's what I started on, I started on hard. If you know me from early, you know I started off on hardcore trap like trap trap so yeah and then obviously over time i started to look back on the songs i used to listen to when i was younger and then i started to actually realize a lot of like producers like um scott storch um scott storch done a lot of like 50 cent lean back and all these songs and big songs in it and then i started to deep like i right, cool these are the people i listened to when i was younger and then from there, I, I done research on them and then put that influence onto my music, you know what I'm saying? And which is what I'm still doing till today, you know what I'm saying? Like Quincy Jones, for instance, I didn't know who the hell he was. I didn't know till like legit, people don't know this yet. I didn't know who Quincy Jones was till like earlier this year, you know what I'm saying? And then when I was looking at his discovery, I was like, this is the person that made my childhood like, like you know what I'm saying, big. And, I, and then when I look back at all he's done, that influence comes on to me as well, you know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of people I'm looking back as well and just like, wow, you know what I'm saying? You've influenced my life in some sort of way, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Who have I collabed with producer-wise? I've collabed with a lot, you know? Coming up, got your name, Case Beats, um, Mazza, a friend of mine, Pressure Beats. I've collabed with a lot, man. Done a lot of collabs still done a lot of collabs yeah producer from the uk that i would love to collab with there's a lot man if i was to collab with anyone from the uk probably probably remedy i like, I like remedy a lot i like remedy a lot still um yeah i like his drums they're punchy yeah man him definitely from america if i was to collab with anyone Funny enough, I don't really listen to too much American music no more, so I can't really say, but in general, anyways, probably Kanye West. Yeah, probably Kanye West. Yeah. Anyone in the UK um, that I want to work with, Dappy. Dappy, I want to work with Dappy. I feel like he's, I've been saying this for years, like even when people didn't fuck with him no more. I was like, I want to work with Dappy in it in terms of talent, like very talented with his voice. Um, 
yeah that be definitely who else do i want to work with in the uk wretch at some point uh yeah one of the top three beats um that i've done that's out there is probably say my grace with trizzy traps and uh culture funds that beat there the reason i really loved it is because i came out of my comfort zone in it I, I actually fully came out of my comfort zone in regards to the drums like i'm known from like, my drums in it how they're always odd and stuff but that was at that one i took that extreme to the point where if you check the comments majority of the, like the majority of the comments were why is the beat like this and that's what i wanted to do that was my aim where i wanted people to actually talk about the beats not just the artist um so it was i think and the way the way the song was just so i was at uni i made a beat at uni um and the song came out whilst i was at uni as well and then the love i just got shown as well around uni from there on was was dope man um yeah that one was dope still and uh, my second my second favorite production that's out there it's probably it's a beat called lonely um it was on my instrumental tape which i dropped like two years ago now and that beat there was like a lot of people jumped on the beat but for me it was like a special beat and it's one of them ones where Usually I'm very like, I cr criticize my work all the time. So I never listen back to like my stuff in it. But you know them ones where I, ca I can actually just chill and listen to it by myself. Like, yeah, it's called Lonely, so I'm on my SoundCloud and stuff. And the people that jumped on it as well, like it just, it resonates in it. Like a lot of people still message me till today. Like, yo bro, like, like I started rapping cause of that beat. It all like, this is how I feel cause of that beat. Like Mowgli, for instance, from Birmingham that's doing his thing right now that was his first his first ever song he dropped was on that beat as well um called truth be told so yeah that's that's really my second my third that one there's a tough one man i got a lot of favorite productions out there but my third for what it done anyways probably like the sea biz and stormzy song on my own that was one of them odd collaborations you don't expect um and it came from six yeah that happened because of six big up to six man he showed me a lot of love when i was coming up a lot of love when i was coming up um so i think that one there because of because of how odd it was like sea biz and storms you like you can never see that coming um so i think that's that one is up there still so i think those are the top three that's out there at the moment One of the songs that I like, um, I think it's the, one of the new songs on Kojo's project called uh, High Grade, High Grade, yeah, it's got like a reggae feel, um, Geo produced that, I just, I just like the authenticity, you know what I'm saying, it's good to hear something refreshing, especially in like our scene where it's very clouded these days, um, so that's one of the songs where it stands out for me. Um, another one, funny enough, is produced by GA, the new Kojo one of Gigs as well. Um, PNG, that one there, I like the, I like the production. It's heavy, man. And another one, a third song. Nah, there's a lot of songs I like, man. I'm big up to all the producers doing their thing as well, and GA Remedy, IO. Um, Levi Lennox, uh, yeah, man. There's there's a lot, man. There's a lot out there, man. J5, J Rocks, yeah, J Rocks, um, JT, yeah, man. There's there's a lot, man. There's a lot. If I didn't mention your name, my bad, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Me personally, I don't like taking advice because over time, one thing I've sort of like gathered myself is um, in the creative industry anything can work what well, might work for me might not work for you vice versa there's, no formula. there's yeah basically there's no formula in it so i don't like taking advice um but at the same time i do like taking in information there's nothing wrong with it i'm still gonna try what i'm gonna try you know what i'm saying so in terms of advice to upcoming producers i'll tell them less is more 
less is more and always like be open minded you know what I'm saying I, I started off on hardcore trap like hardcore trap with no musical background and over time I've learned to teach myself pop R&B drill whatever anything I can make a rock song tonight if I wanted to and that's 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 you being able to be open minded you know what I'm saying obviously that takes time but definitely be open minded less is more you know what I'm saying sometimes you feel like you got all the sounds you got all the sounds in the world and you want to put it all together that's it's not needed you can find one sound and that carries the whole song that yeah network as well man that's that's definitely important I feel like for me networking played a huge part compared to like my actual production because I can network I done I don't say cut corners but I did things faster in it I reach I was able to reach out to people rather than wait for them to reach out to me um, so I think networking plays a huge part um, yeah yeah that's all I'd say still yeah and stay humble as well all the time man that's definitely important humble in regards to future projects and what I'm trying to do um, as I said earlier I'm not just a music producer no more I'm a manager as well and I run events as well and other things so I feel like over time what's happened is I've gone from just being a producer to being an entrepreneur so I'm doing a bunch of other things not just producing um, but in terms of the producing aspect of things I've been working a lot with a lot of new artists which is what I've always done I don't just work with big artists I love working with new talents so I've got a few songs with a few people coming as well as some big artists coming as well um, on the management side of things um, the artists I'm looking after they're dropping like a lot of new music as well like Cabs for instance we just dropped a new video um, called If I Was Your Man which is out right now yeah so this Cabs is Lau which is like a rapper singer like got a Bryson Taylor sort of vibe and then this Pen Vision he's got like a grown grown he reminds me of Michael, Michael Buble you know what I'm saying but yeah man shouts out to Mixtape Madness um yeah man, showed me love from early, like my first instrumental tape dropped with them. Uh, my first ever video where I put a lot of people together for a music video dropped with them. Shouts out to TZ, shouts out to Bills. Um, yeah man, like, yeah, I've got a lot of new stuff coming out man. I know a lot of people have been waiting, thinking what's going on, but I've just been busy, trust me that. Been, but yeah, we're, we're here man, you know what I'm saying? Hit me up on the socials. Wild Boy Ace on Wild Boy Ace One on Instagram, Wild Boy Ace One on Snapchat, and then just Wild Boy Ace on Twitter. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, man, hit me up, man. I'm always working. Yeah. <laughs>